Well, welcome to the Left Bench Experts. I'm Jacob with Josh. And well, this, this is this is eerily new for both of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we were been talking about this for a while, right? Yeah, we've been wanting to get this going yeah. for like since October. We've, yeah, been, we've been wanting to do this. this. Um, so how's the MLB going, Josh? Well, congratulations to the Houston Astros winning their second title in six years. Ooh, wow. Uh, well, we're not going to get into the first one they won, but I, I just want to congratulate Dusty Baker on winning his first championship as a manager. It took him a very, very long time. Uh, he was with the San Francisco Giants uh, in that infamous pullout game that he took out his pitcher in. But it, it, he truly deserved it. He, like, as much as I don't like the Astros – Ooh, shocker. Um, he deserved it because he's been working hard to at least win a championship, win a ring. I think that's uh, that's big for him, and I'm, I'm happy for him especially, not the team. But happy the Astros him. own the Yankees, by the way. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm no. in a down mood with the Yankees. <laughs> um, I think the Yankees are going to suck next year. I think uh, Judge is leaving. They're not going to pay him. Well, it's an interesting one because. Um, First of all, the the free agent market is it's a very elusive one because the Yankees have been looking for a shortstop a shortstop for a very long time. Um, with yeah. Trey Turner, Carlos Correa, I think. Jeter. <laughs> no, but like I, th- I think their w- number one priority is going to get Aaron Judge. But if he says no, I want to go. I think they're going to look for a, another pitcher to help Cole. Um, obviously. They didn't expect Nestor Cortez to do as well as this year. I didn't expect it. It was a pretty big shock. Uh, I'm happy for Nestor, but I think reuniting with Justin Verlander from Houston because he opted out. He's not coming back to Houston this year, which is going to be big. I think they're going to try to get him, which they should. Um, I think there's going to be a big year for free agency, see what the Yankees do. If they cannot get Aaron Judge, it's a big loss because he's been the face of the franchise since Jeter left. He's been the face of baseball, arguably, for MLB for the past what four years? Yeah, five he's, years. He's been he's been he's been the face, and it's hard because you're in the New York market, and you know it's going to be challenging. It's going to be rough, and going to San Francisco, obviously, it's home state, his own town. Um, it's going to be very very challenging, and other teams are coming in and they're going to try, but I don't think he's going to go for it. Um, but if he stays with the Yankees, I think his mission is to win the World Series here. That's not going to happen, though. The Yankees can't make it past the, what, divisional? I don't know what it's called. It's the conference championship. They yeah. can't make it to the ALC- uh, ALCS. If they see the Astros in the playoffs, they're going to lose. I mean, Astros love using well, garbage cans anyway. But now, so. here's the thing with free agency. A lot of moves have been made. Uh, G-Man Choi of the Tampa Bay Rays for a while has been traded to Pittsburgh. Uh, nice first baseman. He's Pittsburgh's a cool irrelevant. They do have a nice young rising star in uh, Nelson Cruz. I really like him. He's tall dude. He is. Uh, he throws a hundred mile an hour ball as a shortstop. Like he's Damn. he's an athletic freak, and I'm very excited for Pittsburgh as him for a superstar because they they've been dying for a superstar for the past decade and long. Um, I'm happy that Pittsburgh is looking like they have a superstar because you know I've been. Wanting other teams to at least succeed because you know it's been a little bit, a little bit stale for entertainment wise for baseball. Not, having a, not a, a lot of parody there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I will because it's very interesting what Judge is gonna do because if he stays, this means he's he wants to win it because, like, let's say he leaves, he can everybody's gonna sell and not tell him uh, you can never win it in New York. Mm-hmm. That's that. I think that's gonna be his, his. Um, his uh, not uh, I think his deep self thought for a while if he moves somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, the Yankees are gonna have a hard time trying to keep them. They got to find the money. Yeah, but I feel like Yankees, they have the money. They, they, the Yankees, they, they, man, they just don't want to pay them. <laughs> I, they um, they got it. They have. It's to. like Lamar Jackson with the Ravens. Especially. Um, so. Well, moving on. Yes. The next topic we're going to talk about is, well, NASCAR, another uh, sport that ended a couple weeks ago. This is not my sport, by the way. So I'm MLB not. wasn't mine. Oh, but so. it is mine. <laughs> um, but no, this is not my sport. They had their championship race with Logano, Elliott, Bell, and Chastain. 
Well, the way Chastain got into it, he decided that real life was a video game. Um, at Martinsville, it's a paperclip is what we call it because, well, it's shaped like a paperclip. No banking, no nothing. It looks um, like a paperclip? Yeah, it literally looks like a paperclip. Dead ass. Literally, if you had the... Pull, pair- pull, up, pull up a photo of the track for him. Hold on. I'm looking at it. Yeah, up. What's it, it called up. again? Martinsville. Martinsville. Oh my god, this is unprofessional of us on the first day. We're looking. Hey, at it's the first. It's the first podcast. We <laughs> learn <know>. from here. <laughs> so soon we're gonna have that TV behind you. Yeah, working, perfect. So. Yeah. Uh, what's it called again? Martinsville. Martin. Martin, and then S V I L E. Martin. No. Um, while he's looking it up, so he decided that uh, I think it was going to the last lap, entering turn one and two. Oh my said, god, it does look like a paperclip. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it does look like it. Um, his spotter said he needed at least two spots to make it to the final four. Well, let's say let's say he got those two spots as entering turn three and four, he floored it and wall ride all the way into the finish line, and he wow. passed the person he was supposed to pass, and he made it to the final four. Uh, Christopher Bell ended up winning that race, which is overshadowed because of that hilarious moment. <laughs> He literally, he, his interview, he said, GameCube NASCAR 2005. That's how I learned how to do it. <laughs> he literally, video I, games. I love how athletes now are getting their stuff. It doesn't matter if it's NASCAR, NFL, MLB are getting their stuff from video games, which are the times now because yeah. video games are the biggest plat. Well, not one of the biggest platforms right, right now of this generation. And I think that athletes who are trying to emulate some moves from the video games are kind of crazy, but are kind of funny and cool. And I think if people more do that more, it's going to be more viral. And then what makes this even funnier is that um, people outside, like drivers outside of NASCAR were praising that move, like Fernando Alonso and Roman Grosjean. Yeah. They were like, oh, my God, that is genius. Well, well deserved a very, very good move from uh, Chastain's part. Um. If you don't know those two drivers, they're from F1, which the rich kid of uh, sports, pretty much. I don't understand, but they, okay. they're uh, I hate F1. I think they know it all. Um, but going out of the championship four race, it was terrible. It was boring as hell. Uh, same guy led pretty much ninety percent of the race. Oh, um, they need to they need to take Phoenix. I don't think Phoenix deserves a championship race. Um, if it is that boring, like I turned it off after the stage two, and I knew Lagana was going to win it. Like, it was that boring. The only interesting thing was the final restart when Chastain dumped Elliott. Like, and then after that, it was like Logano just held the lead. It was like Logano and his teammate right behind him. So, nothing interesting was going to happen. I I think it was a bad thing on NASCAR's part. Mm-hmm. I think the Phoenix race earlier in the year had the same result. Like, not that much entertainment. So, they should have realized that. we The schedule's already made for next year, so there's nothing they yeah. much can do about it. But, um... Well, he, who you got winning next year? Like who I got winning next year? Yeah, too early. You have no idea. Like the rides switch so much within these three months. I was gonna say we should talk about like all the rides and like all the sponsors that are either like joining or not. Oh yeah, or talk about the sponsors. Yeah, um, like what's, who's gonna be who's gonna be leaving? Who's gonna be so going? Kyle Busch, he's been in the NASCAR since two thousand two. He's been in it for a while. Longest time, he's been with M&M's and Joe Gibbs Racing for 10 years, 11 years, a lot, a while. Mm-hmm. He finally leaving. M&M's decided to drop him as a driver, and Joe Gibbs Racing dropped him as a driver. Wow. Probably to put his grandson in. Spoiled piece of... Most whoa, likely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Most likely. Whoa, whoa, Anyways, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's calm down, dude. Um, he went to RCR and to drive the number eight car, which, funniest thing is, his biggest rival used to drive the eight car. Oh, wow. Um, Dale Earnhardt Jr., they had a little scuffle in, I think, 2010 to 2013. I think it was back when they had the car tomorrow and the big wing on the back end of it. Yeah, that, that like, uh, big rear spoiler, that was almost like a, a GT car. That was, like, 2008, 2009-ish. Yeah. And then you had uh, Kurt Busch, finally retired after a long career from 1999 to 2022. Not under his own uh, discretion because no. of uh, that that crash and i think it was qualifying in pocono uh rear-ended the wall and he was out for concussion ever since and that was like july of this of this year and the thing with this next gen car is it's supposed to be 
the, the most safest car that NASCAR has ever run. But it continued to crush under the pressure of, like, rubber buildup in the wheel wells. That's what started the fire for uh, Keselowski in, uh, in Phoenix and Harvick in Darlington, I believe. Mm-hmm. And with another concussion in Texas, but with Alex Bowman still yeah. hitting the rear end of the car, Oof. but he was out for, like, three weeks because of concussion protocols. So this, I, I hope that NASCAR is going to actually fix this stuff and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. Don't worry about it. Because if that, if they screw up the safety record that they built over the past 20 years, mm-hmm. the this this sport's going to de- decline again. It's just going to happen. The sport had a big spike around COVID because, well, they were pretty much social distancing themselves anyways. I mean, think about it. You're in a car and then with other people in cars. And then yeah. as soon as you get out of them, then you spread them apart. I think that's when NASCAR kind of spiked in viewership because of, yeah, you know. Yeah, during COVID, NASCAR was one of the big sports leading television ratings because, yeah. honestly, everybody's mostly social distancing. You have your driver, and you have, obviously, your equipment, and you have your manager, and you have all those other resorts. But everybody was social distanced. I think, I think COVID did help NASCAR bring more eyes for viewers who have, like, never watched it. Like, mm-hmm. personally, like, I haven't watched NASCAR before COVID. Like, I didn't even, like, pay attention. I was like, oh, NASCAR. But watching it a little bit, I was like, oh, this is pretty interesting because well, there was no sports on TV. There was really nothing on TV because <laughs> we were on lockdown at a certain time. Um, I think with NASCAR has to, I don't know, like, they have to, like, they have a certain audience, but I think they can go a little bit bigger. They definitely can go bigger. Um, but there was a, I can't remember what it was, but I think a lot of people that don't like NASCAR because it's boring because they're just driving around in circles. Mm-hmm. But it, then those peop- same people watch F1, where the only lap that matters is the first lap. Put your hand down. <laughs> Literally, F1 <laughs> is so much more boring than NASCAR. NASCAR, you're racing inches apart. F1, the leader's 30 seconds ahead to second place. And, like, the pit stops aren't even that entertaining because there's, like, two seconds where NASCAR pit stops are 12, 10 seconds. And those pit stops matter because you actually can pass someone. Where F1, you gain, gain, what, a second? Well, the thing with that is it's kind of... It's kind of the same argument as how people say, oh, NASCAR is boring. It's like people... You you haven't really paid enough attention to see what actually is going on. So, like, if people pit at a certain lap before their competitor, they can pass them when their competitor is exiting the pit lane. Mm -hmm. So people don't really understand that. DRS was developed to make the racing more entertaining in some parts. And some, it's same thing with NASCAR. Some track, some tracks work, some tracks don't. So it's more. Especially the paperclip does. (laughs) I don't know. Short tracks have been very, very good to NASCAR lately, but some of the like street courses for F1 have been dog water. Just absolute. So NASCAR's brain in a street course. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> but NASCAR's brain in a street course uh, to the Chicago one next year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They are. I think they went from having only two road courses to, I think, having six or seven. Watkins, Coda, Sonoma. Uh, it was Road America. They're not going back. Um, Chicago street course. Yep. Yeah. I think that's, is that? No, that's not it. Roval? Yep. Yeah, two that's Two rovals. Oh yeah, you're right. Two rovals. So they would. They were ra- recently. They raced at like what seven courses. Yeah. So yeah, they've been growing in road courses, but they still do a bunch of short tracks and ovals too. And a dirt track. And oh boy. Oh, dirt track. Yeah, NASCAR is the most diverse motorsport. You have dirt track, road courses, intermediates, short tracks, super speedways. Three super speedways now. I'm um, pretend you. Tur- yeah, I keep forgetting Atlanta is a super speedway said. now. Um, pret- <laughs> Shut up. Like that sounded cool. That's not, no, I'm not going to lie. I don't watch it, like, on a regular buy it, like basis, but, you know, that sounded pretty cool. Um, I definitely watched the Dirt Track one. The they, Dirt Track one's interesting. Um, yeah. I was like, so, they were promoting it. I was like, well, let me just catch this for a little bit. The first Dirt Track uh, was the trucks, because obviously they're older trucks. Um, my favorite driver. Uh, Who is it? He, he used to uh, race in the Cup Series. Oh, he. Come on. He got screwed out of a ride a couple oh. times, a couple, three, four, five times. Um, he has the talent, and he moved okay. on to the truck series. Uh, his name's Matt DiBenedetto. 
And I was watching him, of course, because he's my favorite driver. Go to the truck series race at De Bristol Dirt. He is in, I think, fifth, and he's about to pass someone for third. He slides up. They literally stuck their bumpers together. Wow. Like, they were stuck like glue. And, <laughs> of course, he's bad luck, and he broke a drive strap at Coda, where he was leading. Okay. He got caught in other people's shenanigans. Like, most of the his career. And then, finally, Talladega. Last lap. I remember this for, like, it was yesterday, and it was, like, last month. Um, I'm sitting at my house watching it. I'm like, he's going to screw it up. I mean, he's been in, a, he's been in this position at Talladega six, seven times, and he screwed it up every single time. He held the bottom lane. He finds a lane. He passes the leader. Caution comes out. I'm like, okay. And, he, and he's continue watching. Other driver beat him to the line by, like, a tenth of a second, not even, like, less than that, like, maybe a tenth of an inch. And NASCAR, and I'm like, well, NASCAR's going to give this one to Brent Holmes, which was the local driver. Luckily, Matt DeBenedetto ended up winning, and he finally got that off his shoulder. He he never won a race in NASCAR, and I feel like that will give him the boost he needs to continue. And, like, I can't wait for next season to what, what he can do. The boost that people need is, well, segue into NBA. The Lakers, oh boy. Uh, I I don't want to say rough start because that's an understatement. It's a brutal start. They're two, they're and, two and eight. No, they're two and ten right now. Two and ten? Yeah. Damn. Good, because, you know, a little bit. They're two and ten. Um, I don't know how they're going to do this, the Lakers, how they're going to manage everything. Like, I don't pay attention to the Lakers, but, like, as much. But now looking to the season, I'm looking at them as more. I'm like, I didn't think they would be this bad. I thought they'd be middle of the pack. Because they're still the same from yes, uh, last year, just a different coach. Well, they still sucked last year. I mean, yeah, but the Lakers are too old. They have Russell Westbrook, actually Russell Westbrook. He, he went 0 for 11. You're in the NBA and you go 0 for 11 in a game. Like, the fudge? How the hell do you go 0 for 11 in a game? Well, uh, And LeBron's getting older. AD is injury prone as hell. He yeah. sucks. They they literally have no buddies. And Other than LeBron, I, AD, and Westbrook. Not just only they're old, they can't shoot from beyond the three court. Yeah, they and can. Then, the one white kid they have. Uh, what's his name, Reeves? <laughs> I mean, but, like, you know, you can't rely on one person because, you know, but still, uh, they're, 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 little, they're, oh, they're just, I don't know. They have to do something. They have to trade players away. They have to trade Westbrook. I don't know what's. No one wants them. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like, you don't think the Thunder will take him back? No. Well, the no. Thunder's actually sitting pretty right now. Oh, yeah, they are. And I think if Bronny James doesn't go to college and go straight into the NBA next year, the oh, Thunder no. have a sweet chance of getting Bronny, LeBron, Chet Holmgren, Shy, and Josh Giddy. Imagine having that as your starting five. That's actually Like, sick. they would go from, in 2K terms, 0 and 82 to 82 and 0. Oh, yeah. Um,. But well, not don't want to keep the focus on the Lakers, but yeah, they've been they've not keep focus on the Lakers saying again, but um, yeah, this 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 season feels predictable like as usual. I expected Milwaukee to have a good start, well, because it's still early, but you know they're two and ten, uh, ten and two. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I said that wrong. They're ten and two. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo is doing really well. Uh, what a surprise! Man's not a surprised athlete. at this point, like. This is Giannis. Um, Giannis is just a beast, man. I don't know how just to stop. Um, on the, well, the West, you know, the West. Because the Eastern Conference is what I expect it to be. I have the Milwaukee Bucks as, like, the top seed. And I have Celtics. Uh, hold on. Let me check my notes because. The, the Cavs s- are the second seed, by the way. Yeah, the Cavs. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I expect it with Donovan Mitchell. I expected the Cavs to do very well this year. The 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 Darius Garland is going to be a man to be reckoned with here soon. Yeah, I um, expected with Donovan to be way better as they were last year. Um, Cleveland, uh, is, I'm happy for them because since LeBron left, they have been very, very, very. They also not. have Evan Mobley. Yeah, that's also another good prospect. Yeah. He, he's literally Chet Holm. No, Victor Wembanyama, but yeah. smaller. Like, he, he can dribble, he can shoot, he can dunk, he can pass. Victor Wamayana, whoever picks him up, I feel like will be turned into a contender instantly. Yeah. This man is seven foot three, 
a long <laughs> wingspan oh, no, I that saw. can dribble like a point guard, can shoot like Curry, can drive like Shaq. This man is literally once in a lifetime. He is literally... So you've had Michael Jordan, yeah. then Kobe, then mm-hmm. Kobe, then LeBron. This is LeBron, then Victor Wemayana. This man is a freak athlete. <laughs> and if he is a bust... Oh my god. How would you god. feel if he's a bus? I would feel disappointed. <laughs> I mean, just looking at him play, he can it takes him two stride to go from the three point line to the yeah. basket. This um, man is a freak athlete. But yeah, Easter Conference as is predicted. Milwaukee, Boston, uh Boston, uh what their situation be before the season started was pretty tricky and their, you know, PR team I think went a little bit crazy. Because um, that whole situation, uh, we're not gonna speak on it. Uh, but I'm happy Boston's doing well. Atlanta, of course, with Trey Young and that crew over there. Uh, Toronto is above five hundred. They're they're steadily, you know, they're trying to keep keep up. The Knicks. Uh, uh, don't give us. They no. think they're five and seven now, or six and seven. They are six and six. Six and six. So they're five hundred. Yeah, they're five hundred. Um, um, do you think the Knicks will make the playoffs this year? They did make it last year. No, they didn't. They didn't? Two years ago. Oh, two years ago. Oh, I was thinking of another year. Uh, but uh, as a Knicks fan, painfully, I love them, but uh, they just ripped my heart out. But uh, I don't know. This this is like a weird regime with Coach and Coach, coach Thibodeau. Like, it's, it's weird because, uh, you know, two years ago, we were really solid defensively, and then Julius Randle popping up out of really nowhere because we had him because I think, did we trade for him? I believe so. We trade or sign him. He was on the Lakers at first, and yeah, I think yeah. we traded him. He wasn't the same place, person that on the Lakers like two years ago. He was just a different animal. He was amazing. This year, years. he's doing good, too. He's doing amazing. Um, like he's getting back his stride as he was two years ago. But um, The thing with the Knicks is they don't have a superstar. That's what's, but that's what's here's killing the thing. me. With not having a superstar, more people get to touch the ball. They have yeah. three people with 20 points per game. Yeah. Randall, RJ Barrett, and Brunson. Brunson also has six assists a game, and Randall has 10 boards. Randall's averaging a double double right now. Well, that's not saying. I, it's hard because obviously, with the coach's different style, he's more of like a old school menta- like mentality. He's more of a defensive guy. He's very. Well, defense won championships. Well, defenses win championships. But, you know. It's. I really hope they do have that superstar, but I feel like it's not gonna happen in a very long time. It's. I mean, it depends on how. They're very unlucky in the draft. I mean, Obi Toppin. Oh my. Obi Toppin, I thought was gonna be good, but he's just. I don't. He doesn't. He has like the splash highlights that you're like, oh my god! Like he he show you the glimpses. Like he gives you the, oh, like he gives you the hope. Like yeah. Yeah. But like I but don't then, know. He doesn't do that consistently. Um. One yeah. of their newest pickups, Quentin Grimes. I feel yeah. like he will be decent. Yeah. Um, Jer- Jericho Sims. Uh, I I watched the game where you, they played the, oh who was it? The, whatever team they absolutely smoked the last couple. <laughs> I think oh, the Wolves. Yeah. Um. He he's athletic. He was doing good. He made a couple good defensive stops and got a couple boards and. Brunson couple has boards. been looking impressive. Huh? Jalen Brunson, the one they got over free agency, he looks. Oh, paid way too much for him. Way too much for him. Well, we're not going to get into that as much. But, you know, he looks oppress- impressive. Um, uh, wasn't as enthused when we signed him. He didn't want to go here. Like, Well, yeah. well his, father, his father was here. Yeah. He had family here. But, but it's like, I don't think when, when New York broke the news, everybody thought they were restructuring contracts to get Donovan and Mitchell. But, I was. <laughs> don't get me started. With that. But then... Then all of a sudden, oh, we got Jalen Brunson. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. You got a chance to get an all star caliber player every single year to Jalen Brunson, who's got it, I think, once. I, I, or no, I, think he's ever, I don't think he's ever been an This all-star. is not a smash on Brunson. It's just the organization is dumb. Like, you restructure all those contracts, you have that much money, and then it'd be like Donovan Mitchell, Brunson. Let's go with Brunson. Let's go with the ladder of the two in the crap. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, they have been way better since, what, three, four years ago? They have been way better. Yeah. I feel like if they have a better season this year, like, let's say they barely make it to the play. They're in the play-in tournament, right? Oh, they're playing so stupid. Well, well, I like it because it gives an opportunity to extra teams. 
the thing is, if you're like five games from the eighth seed and you're going against the eighth seed and you happen to beat the eighth seed, that's unfair. Like, if, but if you're a game behind, that makes sense. Because if you win that game, oh, guess what? You're now tied, and you tiebreaker would go. You know what I mean? But like, but like, say, say the first through eighth seed are like, yeah, unstoppable, and then the ninth through last are like have twenty wins. That means the ninth seed and the tenth seed have twenty wins and have a chance to make it to the playoffs. That's that's unreal. That's stupid. Like the eighth seed could have fifty wins and the ninth seed could have twenty, and the ninth seed just so happened to beat them in that one game, that one game, and then the ninth seed's in the playoffs. I think it's good for them because obviously you give an opportunity for a, a, like a team just to have that Cinderella story for a little bit. We don't know if they're gonna actually win the championship. That would give. Uh, it, 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 it just it's a great story, if you true. have that in playing tournament team winning it all. Yeah, it would be but a great story n- if they had like maybe one less win than either. But twenty wins compared to fifty, I mean like, yeah. Come on. On to the Western Conference. Uh, Warriors didn't look well in the beginning of the week. They were two and seven. Now they have won a couple in a row. They're five and seven. They're 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 keeping afloat. They have won two games in a row. Uh, Curry, still doing Curry things. And say, don't count out the Warriors. I mean, Never. I counted out the Warriors last year, and I thought the Grizzlies were going to beat them <laughs> no, I, in playoffs. I, I, but, I did mm-hmm. have the same uh, thoughts, too, of the Grizzlies winning last year, but yes, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, the Splash Bros, and Draymond Curry. It's, it's funny because they're dynasty, because technically they are a dynasty right now, because oh, yeah. they've won the championship last year, and they, they won it a couple years back, but they are a dynasty. The Warriors are this generation's dynasty, like big dynasty, because we haven't had that in a while since, well, the Bulls. Nobody's going to top the Bulls. Let's just put it out there. Nobody's going to top that 90s Bulls because it's going to be very hard. But No, well. No. I, I feel like the Warriors would beat the 90s Bulls. You think? Here's the thing. Hot, those hot, those, those hot 90 take alert. Bulls, hot take alert. those 90s Bulls don't have three-point shooting. But but they, they, they won the— Just eight. because they have MJ. Ooh. Okay, look— <laughs> Here's Everybody's my thing. Everybody's going to kill us in the comments no matter what. Oh, my God. <laughs> shut up. Anyways, my thing is, like, MJ, he's a god. He's he's to go. I, I'll take MJ over Jordan any day. Wait. MJ over LeBron, not Jordan. That's the same person. Yeah, the I'm same sorry. people. What? The same person. <laughs> what do you see, mean? See, he, his hot take is getting in over his head. Anyways, but I'll take MJ over LeBron any day. Do you think the but, Warriors can win two more championships or at least one more? Curry has four rings, right? Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. They've won four. I thought he had five. So you thought since they had five, they can overtop the Bulls from the 90s? I still think they can. So they had Jordan, Dennis Rodman, and Scottie Pippen. Oh, boy. Who else? I'm not going to go into that right exactly. now. Exactly. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not going to no, exactly. go into that argument, but. Literally, I feel like Curry, Thompson, and Poole. That's the Warriors' big three. Then you had Pippen, Rodman, and Jordan. That's both big three. Three pointers are worth more than two pointers. Steve Kerr was on that team anyway. He was in the nineties. Okay, yeah, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr. <laughs> but Steve, okay. <laughs> well, that's ironic. honestly, that's with, ironic. Well, Anyways. well, well. I think with the worst success of winning those as many championships in this decade is put Steve Kerr. Because with, because he knows what championship predominance is because he knows how he knows how to handle himself in the playoffs yes he he knows like this is how you do this and this is how you do that yeah um but yeah the warriors are trying to keep afloat um the jazz the jazz well, well i'm not surprised because last year they were really yeah but they lost mitchell yeah that's, that's that, what that... i was like they lost Mitchell, and they have what? Rudy Gobert? No, Rudy Gobert's not even on the Jazz anymore. Mm-mm. Who who's even on the Jazz? Yeah, um, <laughs> don't want to say that like that, but no, um, Jazz really impressed their coach. It's probably gonna win Coach of the Year. Who do they have? Ricky Rubio? I no, think I I believe so. I don't I, think they even have Ricky Rubio. Don't they? I know. Go. I think they traded to the Wolves. No, they no they have him. They 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 have him. Jazz is head coach. I I don't know. Will Hardy. Who the hell's that? Utah Jazz is Will Hardy. He used to coach with the Boston Celtics. I'm talking about their players. I don't care about their coach. The coach is not irrelevant. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, not irrelevant? Not irrelevant? Wow. What do you mean by that? Well, Hardy, yeah. I don't know. Whatever you, whatever you take it as. Sorry, Utah fans. So they fans. are relevant. Whoever's, Maybe. Whoever Utah fans, I'm sorry that we didn't know. Just like, it who, came off their mind. I see, I don't know who the players are. I mean, they traded two of their best players. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Quinn just left because they have that time to move on, especially. But uh, they got a young coach and... Will Hardy, I'm happy for him to succeed. Um, young? What is he, 50? No, no, he's really young. Like, 34. Young. Damn. Yeah. He moved up. They, they, they got a good one. Um, so far, he's looking good. Um, Luka Donk. Luka. Love him. MVP this year. Donkic? You can't say no, Donkic? No, 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 no. I'm just so impressed with him this year. He's going to win MVP. He's going to win MVP. Like, he's, he's, he's a front runner. No, no, he is the points per game, the best right now. Thirty six point eight. Speaking of MVPs, NFL. Well, the MVP race has opened up to a lot of potentials because the weirdest well, of all time. I mean, like there is so many. You got Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. Uh, hell, Tua. Tua was in it. Tua was in the oh. MVP race. No, and, he is. Wait, 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 wait. Don't be surprised about... Don't be... I wasn't going to be surprised, but... Geno Smith. My brother's a big Seattle fan, and I know he's really happy with this. He didn't think this was going to happen, but he's really happy with this. Um, Geno Smith. Have yourself a year, man. I'm... Wait till the playoffs when he chokes it. He, he's... Don't. You know who he reminds me of? Tim Tebow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, whoa, time whoa, out, time whoa, whoa, out. Whoa, whoa. He has that one good year. No, no, no. He has that one good year, and everybody thinks he's I so mean, good. I th- that one good year that Tebow had, no no offense to Tebow, it wasn't as good as Geno's having right now. What, what are the Seahawks' record? It is 6-3. and three. They're facing Tampa Bay in Germany tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Germany? Yeah, they're, yeah they're, there's a game of Germany. For, first time ever in Germany, yeah, man. Why? Well, they want to open to the international market, so they did England for. They've been doing England for. It's a long the time. NFL. Don't ask. They're called the No Fun League for a reason. Well, I guess I guess MLB did the same thing with the Red Sox and uh, the Yankees. Yankees and I watched Britain. it. That was that was really amazing. Oh, and kind of like the. Uh, what was it? No, the White Sox and the Yankees when they oh, played yeah. in the Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Yeah, that one. That one too. Uh, that was amazing. Sad as a Yankees fan, but. I digress, but on we're talking NFL. Yeah, Geno Smith. I'm really happy for him. Um, he he's matured very well, and a lot of people didn't see Pete Carroll doing this well. People people thought Pete Carroll was going to retire after this year. I don't see that now. Not going to happen. This team is young, mm-hmm. and they they rub off of Pete Carroll his energy because he's for a 70 plus year old man. Coaching in the NFL, as much energized he is, he doesn't feel like that old. I think he could still go um, with his coaching. Um, obviously, there's a lot of good NFC teams. Not as much, but they're good teams. Two, three? There, there's like at least four good teams. There's only the five that are above 500. Yeah. it's The NFC is weird this year. Um, um, speaking of the... And actually, let's continue talking about quarterbacks. So I got top ten quarterbacks for everyone. Oh, um, these are in no particular order because I feel like I would have been biased. And don't be I don't biased. Be biased. We can't be biased here. Um, I have Allen, Mahomes, Tua, Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, Justin Kirk, Fields. I'll get back to that. Kirk Cousins, Kyler Murray, Geno Smith, Tom Brady, and uh, Justin Herbert. Again, those are in no particular order, but those I feel like are my top ten quarterbacks. Fields. Okay, okay, wait. So I'll, the I'll, Bears are, what's they? They're three and six. They're three and six. All three of those wins are because of Fields. No one else. Well, yeah, uh, the Fields is their entire o- offense. Well, And they only lost to the Dolphins by three because of Fields. Fields is a top ten quarterback Yeah. just because of what he does for the team. I mean, look at Allen. He He's pretty much holding to Bell's offense. And yeah, with his injury right now. And I feel like he'll be fine. I mean, he had limited practice yesterday, but, I mean, if, if he feels like he's – I mean, he still was throwing the ball after that against the Jets. Like, he trucked it 60 yards. I mean, yeah. Like, but, they're literally but, play but after. I, I, I do want to say adrenaline is a heck of a thing when you're in the moment. Yeah, but Allen would have – I don't know. 
I mean, it's hard to tell until we get a confirmation. We probably won't get a confirmation until either late today or tomorrow, uh, okay. whether or not he's going to play. So this is my top ten, or not in order again, because, well, we're, I'm not biased. I think these are the top ten. Um, I have Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, um, Justin Herbert. I have Joe Burrow. Yeah, Joe Burrow. Uh, Tua Tagovailoa. I have uh, Geno Smith, Lamar Jackson. Um, we have it's not, Kirk Cousins. Has been a quiet name. Yeah, I didn't want to say it. Like it took me a while, but Kirk Cousins, man. I'm, we'll see how he performs like, tomorrow. Yeah, Jalen Hurts, of course, can't leave him out. Um, uh, yeah, uh, then I have who else? Sorry for the long pause. Come on. I have, yeah, there's not, oof, it's rough. Um, I'll say, did I say Geno Smith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I can't remember. I think so. We have to look at some pod. I think you did. I remember, I I remember Smith. Smith. You said Smith. Geno Smith, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's. <clears throat> I want to say this year's quarterback, top 10. If you said this before, if you said Geno Smith, Jalen Hurts, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, because he's, like, unbelievable this year. People will be looking at you like you're crazy. If we said the top ten right there and then, they're going to be like, where's Aaron Rodgers? Where's Tom Brady? They suck. They're well, I still have Brady in my top ten because, well, well he's Tom Brady. Well, And he's going through a divorce and he's still playing decent. I, like, it's not like he's playing, like, game crap. Was, look, look, that game was bad. Until, like, that last drive they had, that game was really bad, what he did. That last drive saved them. I mean, he still I, threw the game with a touchdown. I mean, yeah, so um, it's like kinda, Tom is not going to retire. Um, he's not going to retire. So we're going on another NFC team here, Eagles. Yeah. Are they a legit eight and zero team, or are they frauds? Uh, I don't know. Um, because you know, second statistically, second they're the greatest uh, team in the second quarter. But like, I don't know. Second half, they haven't you know had the same effect as they do in the first half because they're a really good first half team. You know, you're. As Bill, the legendary Giants head coach, Bill Parcells, your record says what your record you are. Like, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, it says who you are. And I think you can't – you have to at least admit they're they're a tough team. No. They can run the ball. Okay. They're one of the what best What if they go teams. against a defense that actually can stop the run? Well, you can't also – they have a great receiving core. They have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. You have Dallas Goddard as their tight end. You, they have weapons to throw to. And I think uh, Jalen is definitely most improved player. I'm happy for him. Um, watching him in college and seeing him grow into this great quarterback this year, I think it's really – I'm really happy for him. Um, Jalen deserves all the praise right now he he gets. Um, yeah, the Eagles, it's, it's, it's weird. Like, they don't feel like the Steelers from, like, two years ago, how they went 11-0. No, I want to say okay, that. Okay, now I'm going to drop some facts on you. Well, well, well I, I'm after not, you finish, after you well, finish. I'm not saying he's like Roethlisberger because Jalen's not an aging. Oh. No. no. He can run. Well, he can run. But they, it's that's the thing. What Roethlisberger, if. And he has what, no sexual miscon- misconduct whoa, whoa, either. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going to talk about that right now. But with Roethlisberger, you could tell he was aging. But with Jay, he was aging. No, 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 no. Okay, finish your thing. Finish yeah, your thing. I was like, why are you shocked? Um, I'm not shocked about that. but Yeah, but, finish. like, it doesn't feel like – because they have a – now with the Eagles, they beat the Minnesota Vikings the second week of the season. Which... Primetime Kirk Cousins. Well, hey, Primetime Kirk. Where That's you? only – Primetime Kirk. <laughs> well, Kirk is going to be in primetime during the playoffs, so you're going to see how he's going to do it like that. He's um, going to be ass. He's – it's Kirk Cousins. If you if you throw him a one o'clock game, he's a god. Throw him a throw him a t- eight eight p.m. prime time. <gasps> what, do, what, do, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah, it's very very weird. It feels like two different people. But no, um, I don't know. The Eagles' upcoming schedule is a interesting one because they have the easiest schedule in the whole entire NFL. Well, I wouldn't say that. So. They do. Well, you have your in division, your in division people. But they still have the easiest schedule in the NFL. Well. Uh, I wouldn't say that they right do. now. Like, that was proven. Well, look. Who who do they play for the rest of the year? So, right now, they got Washington next. That's the Easy dub. game. Colts are out of the question. Easy dub. I'm happy for Jeff, like Jeff Saturday. He's one of my favorite players. 
Green Bay. Green Bay, they have week Easy dub. 12. Tennessee. Easy dub. They beat Tennessee that easily? The Bills beat them 41-7. to seven. Well, that was early in the season. And if the Eagles are a good team, they should beat the Tennessee Well, remember, Titans. there's no bias here, man. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's not bias. That's just stats. Well, well if the okay, so if the Eagles are better than the Bills, which everybody has been saying, the Eagles should beat the Titans easily. Well, they well, let's say, but the Titans have a really good defense. They they hold Patrick to twenty points, which is really. Do you realize the Bills did the same exact thing? Yeah. Well, they were holding him for like seventeen points throughout the game. It felt like they had a tight, tight grip on Patrick during the game. It wasn't. It was the t- Tennessee offense that couldn't pick it up. Watching that Monday night game? you That's the thing. It's like the Titans are weird. If Derrick Henry isn't going. No, he. it's not that. It's just like Malik Willis is young. He made some impressive throws that weren't like incom- like complete. Like the incomplete uh, passes that he threw were really impressive. Back shoulder, over the top. Um, they were really impressive. Um Sorry, we got sidetracked, but the Eagles' remaining schedule, Week 13, they have the Tennessee Titans. They Easy. Have Giants. Easy. Chicago. Easy. Dallas. Well, Giants and Chicago, 50-50, but it's still Giant. Week you 10. said Chicago 50-50, but you don't give Tennessee a chance? No. Okay. Look, I look at, what is Tennessee's record right now? They're 6-2 f- and two, or 5-2. Five 5-3. and, two. Five and three. Um, Okay. But still, I don't think the Titans are that good of a team. Ready? Then you have Dallas. Dallas will beat them because they don't have Kirk Cooper Rush this time. Okay. New Orleans. Well, New Orleans is not the same. Mm-hmm. And then they have Giants Week 18. So, okay. You want to know who the Eagles have beat to become 8-0? No. The 2-6 and six Lions by three points. They beat the Commanders, which obviously Detroit. barely beat the Jags. They the barely way. beat Detroit in the first game. Yeah, I just said that by three. Um, yeah. They barely beat the Cardinals without D Hop, mind you. Without yeah. D Hop. And then Cooper Rush led Cowboys, which Cooper Rush, if he didn't have, make a couple mistakes, the Cowboys beat him. But I do also, you don't want to underestimate their defense. They I, also only beat the Texans by nine. Texans by nine. Well, Texans, I think they weren't expecting the Texans. They're 1 6 and 1. <laughs> The Texans are one six and one. But here's they're the, literally gonna get the first round draw draft. I know gonna I'm gonna sound a robot. On, I know I'm gonna sound a robot, but you know, winning NFL games is not easy. Um, I know like people do make it easy, but like their professions, they've been working their whole lives to it. But um, Texas, I think they 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 got punched. Like they got a little punch in the first half. They were like, I didn't expect this from the Eagles. Um. Speaking of the Texans, their former quarterback, Deshaun Watson, comes back next week. Oh. Um, um, very interesting. Should never be allowed back in the NFL. Should be fired, suspended indefinitely, not 11 games, and what was it, $2 million fine? Well, I like it how they suspend him until the Texans game. That's what made me more laugh. Week that 11 made next me week. Um, that, Wait, that... Is he suspended next week or is he coming back next week? Uh, I think he should be coming back next week. Hold on. Let yeah, me see next week's game. week 11, which is against the Bills. Y- no, he comes back... Week 12, then, because he's suspended 11 weeks. Uh, he faced the Texans week 13. No, he comes back week 13. I could have sworn he was suspended 11 weeks. I think he comes back week 13, because NFL, I know, purposely did this. They put him against his old team. Um, well... Let's go on to our final uh, segment, the NHL. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I want to hark back on that, um, on the NFL. Um, this Does this feel like the weirdest NFL year so far? Yes. 100%. I mean, this feels like an old school, in a way, where defense is the way right now. Oh, yeah. This feels like an old school, which I like a little bit, too. Obviously, the games have been, haven't been as as, like, explosive to watch. But, you know, th- there's our couple here and there for the season. But I, 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 I think this is to show you that, hey, offense is not the only answer this year. You have imposing defenses. The Bills, I think, have the best defense in the league behind the Eagles. No. Behind Dallas. Eagles. Dallas, no. Dallas have a great defense. The Bills have a better defense. Well, it's it's neck and neck. I think I mean, Dallas – The Dallas. Bills have l- allowed the less miles of points. Lo- a lot less points in the Dallas. Has. It's d- remember, don't forget Denver. Don't get me started on Denver. Broncos country. Let's ride. 
Wait, you have Russell in fantasy, right? I did, and I dropped him. You I dropped hit. him? Yes. You did? For Fields. Fields has been getting me 40 points a game. Oh, no wonder you... I'm like, Fields? Okay, this makes more sense. No, I'm not... This not being biased, but if you look at Fields' stats this year... No, but that makes more sense, because I, I, I've been hearing you talk about Fields lately. I'm like, Fields? Fields has been going off. Yeah, I'm I, I'm happy for Fields, you know. he. You could tell the... the I'm going to work hard in the draft phase, like when he dropped down to to Chicago. It wasn't like he was sad to go to Chicago, but he was like, no, I'm going to show them why I'm the top. But um, harpening back with uh, Denver, woof, that's a – I don't know if they got the right coach because their, their plan was – look, this is their plan, right? They get Nathaniel Hacken, who they were supposed to get Aaron Rodgers. That was their number one. Less, we, I think people forget Aaron Rodgers was their quarterback to get from the get-go. And, my, like, and then they were like, oh, then we have to get somebody else. They thought of Russell like, like their second, but Aaron was their quarterback as they try to get uh, Aaron. As Aaron wasn't going to leave the Green Bay. He's going to retire next year. Yeah, um, but like... Denver's top priority last year was to get Aaron Rodgers because remember that all season was to get Aaron to Denver. Yeah. Then, then you know the shocking trade that Seattle made with 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 um with Russell going. You're like, oh my God, Denver's gonna become a really good team for the first time in what seven years? Because it's been um, 2015. They have yeah. been. It's been seven years. Um, um. So we're gonna go on to the NHL now. Yeah. Um. um I'm okay with this. Um, like, I know my stuff. Like, big Rangers fan. Love what they did during playoffs. The uh, This season has been kind of expecting. Sabres yeah. had a big start, though. The Sabres came out gunning. Like, they yeah. came out on fire. They yeah. cooled off since. They're 7-7 seven and seven now. Um, they were second behind the Bruins. Yeah. And now they're down to seventh in their division. Um, I honestly think the Sabres could make the playoffs. If they get their things going again, well, as a as a Rangers fans, they're seven and five. I, I I think they're they're they're, it's weird a little bit. Like the kit, like they beat the Red Wings. Obviously, the, they're the Red Wings. You know, the they, Red Wings are seven three and three though. They're not just the Red Wings anymore. They're they they are. Yeah, a they have improved. I can't even I just, though the Sabers beat them eight to one, but we don't talk about that. Um, but no, like, um, like. I don't know, like, the Rangers feel like they don't have their stride yet. Like, they win, like, they're 7 and they're seven and 5 and 3. The Sabres need a good goalie. You know, their current goalie, Eric Comrie, is garbage. They have one in the in the AHL, Uka Pekalukinen. And UPL, as people call him, because they don't know how to say that. Um, he's a good goalie. He brought him up for a stint last year, and mm-hmm. he, he went 2-1. and one. And... Kyle uh, Kyle Anderson, great. He's old as hell, but he's still a good goalie. He's decent. Um, the Sabers always had a good goalie. I mean, they went from Hashik to Miller, which was he's getting his jersey yeah. retired here soon. Um, honestly, my opinion, I think the Sabers will break the drought this year if, if they get going again. If they get going, but uh, Bruins are back. Last year, I don't Damn. know. I don't know what happened last year, but this year, whew. They're off to a hot start, man. Oh, my man. God. What, they're 11-2? and two? No, they're 12-2 and two right 12 now. 12-2 now. They play the Sabres tonight, so we'll see how that goes. So, like, with Boston, uh, I I, didn't, like, with Bo- I felt like Boston was in, like, a, a stinch. Like, mm-hmm. they had – you know, you're going to have one of those years that you're just not going to be, I think, as great as you should be. But uh, Bruins are back. Panthers, as you – you know, Panthers, since last year, they've been the same. The Lightning – Hasn't looked as great. Um, they're in a little downfall. The Devils. Mm. That's a that's a surprising name right now. Nah, not really. I mean, I they, mean, yeah. they've had the talent. It's just execution. Yeah, it's it's like because it's just you know the New Jersey Devil hasn't been like a household in a very long time there. Same with the Sabers. The Sabers back in two thousand and like I think back in the two thousands they were like. Oh, this team is good. This team is scary good with Pomerville, Vanek, Derek Roy, Tyler Myers, Ryan Miller, and that. Um, Robin Leonard, when he wasn't drunk, was good. 
No, he he used to show up. And I he was drunk. I, I I've seen like uh yeah following those the NHL stories. Yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. He the Sabers helped him you know get over that. But and then we're happy for. And him. then Robin Leonard leaves in free agency, and I'm like, you just left a team that helped you make your career like help you get your career better, and you're just gonna leave them. The Knights, of course, the Golden Knights are thirteen and two, so they're up. Jack Eichel like- still sucks though. I, I'm kind of salty about that one because of the way he left Buffalo. And, yeah. okay, so this trade for the Sabres has worked out. So before, the whole entire Sabres offense was Jack Eichel. Now they have Tate Thompson, 16 points through 14 games. Darlene, same thing, 16 through 14. Tuck, 11, which he got from the – which Tuck is a hometown. He grew up in Buffalo, so he's always wanted to play for the Sabres. And Tuck is doing really good. Jeff Skinner doing awesome. Olafson doing awesome. Yeah. They have five people that are over ten points. Where if it was just Jack Eichel, it was just Jack Eichel. Like they had, he had no help. Who you? Who you got? MVP. MVP. Or like their top, your top player. <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm not that much into NHL. I mean, I, I've been trying to get into it more and more. Oh but. yeah, we're we're trying to um, as you know as you know hockey hockey in this because I grew up in the Bronx. Uh, hockey in the city wasn't as Big until last year because with the Rangers going to the conference championship, I believe they went to what, game six or game seven. Oh yeah, so they were they were they were almost they were there. close. They were close. I was, it was um I was happy for them because they were just young and they had the mix of experience too with them, and I think, you know, with the Rangers trying to be. I think noticeable. I think it's great for NHL too because you bring the biggest mecca. And mm-hmm. media and like everything there because you know New York is the biggest one of the biggest but arguably the biggest market for sports. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. You got New York City who has the Knicks, the Nets, the Rangers, uh, the Yankees. A, yeah, the Yankees. Mets. Mets. Okay, Mets are irrelevant. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa! In some whoa. cases, in some, in some cases, cases, in they, some cases, they paid two. Jacob DeCrom is uh, sounds like he's about to leave to Texas. They, they paid two hundred eighty million dollars for their roster, and they still suck. Um, but, but you have I know those, Mets fans aren't going to watch this and be like, "You don't know what you're talking about." Those major teams. <laughs> oh, there's always going to be critics. There's oh no, which I, critics. I, I love. I like. I I want to hear what people's opinions are because obviously we're it's just us three in this in this area but you know what people are going to watch this i know they're going to scratch their heads and be like what but i just want to hear what their thoughts are going to be because um, with feedback only, right i think not, it's gonna be great not only that but you got to look the new york area is it's just a big market you got the new jersey jets and the new jersey giants but then you got the buffalo bills and the buffalo sabers i like how you say new jersey because well, they're, they're new jersey yeah we they gotta fix that like honestly that's starting to get annoying they're in East Rutherford, and they're New Jersey. Like, like here's, so, like, with New York teams now, we had the Yankees go to playoffs. We had the Rangers go to the playoffs. You had the Mets in the playoffs. You have the Bills in the playoffs. Bills, Giants, and Jets look like they're about to go to playoffs. The Jets are in. They're right, as of right now, three of the AFC East teams are in. Yeah, and then because the Giants have the Texans tomorrow and Detroit next week. Damn. So it looks like the Giants are going to get in. So it looks like the sports of New York, it looks like it's finally going to go like this because it's been like this. I mean, for a long time. <laughs> you New York knows nothing. If you live in western New York, Buffalo, oh, my God. The 17-year drought. Sabres, yeah. 10-year playoff drought. Like, this, we were going down, and now we're starting to go up. Yeah, New York, I'm, ha- I'm, I'm, we're finally having the sport world of New York resurging. That, which is awesome. Which is awesome here. And LA is because certain. it's been like mostly West Coast people and or Florida for God, for God's sake. Florida went off last <laughs> couple of years. Yeah, I was about to say, what do you guys think of uh, like LA kind of popping off the last couple of years? With and now they're it, was, it, was, it was between LA and Florida for the last couple of years oh, yeah. mm-hmm. that have been winning the championships in every sport. Mostly, I mean, this LA just sucks now. Yeah, the Rams you- suck. The Lakers suck. The Clippers suck. They've always sucked. You know, Clippers should go back to Buffalo. Maybe they'll get some. Uh, maybe they'll get some good players. <laughs> yeah, because now, like back then, or like I say back then, it was like two years ago. It was like twenty twenty. Dodgers won the World Series. Lightning has been. Lightning like, won the World Series on the Cup twice. Twenty twenty. Twice, yeah. Lakers, Rams, uh, Lightning. Um, 
We're just talking Dodgers. about yeah, California and Florida mm-hmm. just dominating the last couple of years. Um, I think with sp- I think when sports is great, like really great, is when New York teams are really good. Yeah, it seems like there's more parity in all these sports now that the New York teams are good. Like if you look at the st- standings, they're all separated by like a game or two. Yeah, like game- if you lose a game, you're f- dropping. No, like okay, all right, uh, but no, uh. I think we're happy. Let's just say Western New York, the city, I think. I think Western New York has been waiting for a sports team to go off. Yeah. Uh, I I'm, mean, I'm happy for you guys here because it's been a very long time. Oh, very long. Very. That's an understatement for you guys. But I'm happy just in general. Uh, the sports world has been going to be interesting for the next couple months and years to come. For sure. So... Well, I think this is our time. Yeah, I think it's time to yeah. wrap it up. Well, thank you up. for listening to the Left Bunch Experts. I'm Jacob. I'm Josh. And we'll see you next time. And never to forget, uh, please interact, comment, uh, share this. I think your guys' opinion also is going to be very important and very vital for us, especially. Um, just please say what you want to say. Have, have a good day. <laughs>